Welcome to our Cyber Talks interview series. I'm Wyatt Cash on behalf of CyberScoop, and I'm here today with Ken Cartson, Senior Vice President, Public Sector at McAfee. Ken, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'd like to start off by asking, um, you know, there's been a lot thrown at Chief Information Security Officers in 2020. How have you seen 2020 kind of change the trajectory or kind of duties of the CISO role in uh, across the board? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's been some dramatic actions taken during the year, you know, when we saw COVID hit and everybody's reaction and response and, and how to go about accomplishing their business. Uh, I think the first thing we saw was a lot of, a lot of stops, a lot of projects that got stalled, trying to understand what environment they were, they were going to be deploying in uh, moving forward in the future. So we saw a lot of stagnation for a couple months. Uh, then we quickly saw pivots in how users are able to connect to the network and what new projects that meant, whether that meant cloud projects, CASB, SASE, UCE, uh, Unified Cloud Edge, for example. How do users connect VPN overloads? How do you compensate? Do you add additional VPN capacity? Or do you look for alternative technologies and capabilities in order to leverage uh, your internal infrastructure or what infrastructure may be outside of your internal edge? Well, next, uh, I'd like to explore the idea that, you know, workforces are now so much more distributed than they were just a few months ago. Uh, what concepts do you believe uh, help make that shift more safe and secure uh, between things like zero trust or multi-factor authentication and micro-segmentation, et cetera? That's a great question. And I think what we saw was the planning behind and in the background going on with all these things with micro segmentation and, and two factor authentication and zero trust. But really what was happening at first was the actual actions of environments, organizations, companies moving to a remote user based environment. And quickly they had to assess what, what types of needs did they have to conduct the business before they over or enhance security on top of that. And what I mean by that is things like collaboration. I mean, did you ever think we'd be talking about Zoom and Teams and, and Google Meets and all of these different utilizations for collaboration in such a hyper mode? Uh, it came out so fast. And in the background, I think what we've had is, is the security organizations looking at that and saying, how do we overlap security? You know, how do we ensure that we're communicating securely, that we're not putting anything in public arenas that we don't want in public arenas? We have to watch the user, we have to watch their identity, we have to watch the information uh, that they're collaborating with. And in most circumstances, if not almost all circumstances, that's in cloud environments, ones that they don't have control over, meaning they have to go to native cloud-based security solutions, which includes Zero Trust, it includes CASB, uh, it includes that architecture we talked about before with SASE or, or Unified Cloud Edge to make sure we can watch the users, where they go, what's hitting them, what's leaving them, and who has access to that data? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's all about data integrity. Well, next I'd like to explore uh, emerging technologies and supply chain concerns. You know, IoT and 5G technologies continue to come online in the US. And obviously that means more technology being brought in house to handle those various improvements. But with those improvements obviously come some deeper supply chain concerns. How should enterprises be collectively uh, handling those concerns and, and at the same time make sure that you know we still don't fall behind technologically? Yeah, that's an awesome question. Uh, we all want to leverage the latest and greatest in technology and IoT and 5G devices, those are presenting some capabilities for us at high speed computing environments with especially on the remote user side and where we place devices and how we utilize them. I think it's important to look at it in a, in a couple of different ways. You know, one is how do you ensure that a lot of these devices that are specific function devices are only doing those specific functions? So how do you overlay things like whitelisting? But do it in new environments, for example, where you might require containers as opposed to a traditional whitelisting technology that you may put on an ATM or you may put in a SCADA device. Uh, then to look at it from the example of if, if we're coming out with all these new devices, it does give us the opportunity to look at serialization and authentication of those devices to ensure that they come from where we think they come from and communicating with who they think they're communicating with. Well, and lastly, as cyber threats continue to grow in sophistication, uh, you know, organizations 
face a persistent challenge just recruiting skilled cybersecurity professionals, uh, you know, capable of protecting their systems against malicious actors. So how do we, uh, as an industry and uh, enterprises, close those gaps um, that continue to exist, and in particular, on the education and training landscape? Yeah. You know, I, I, I look back uh, in my career, and, and this has been an, an example that has been a consistent problem for the industry. There has never been enough talent to go around, and that talent is extremely competitive. And, and we've been, I, I can remember going back to RSA maybe eight or 10 years ago, and this was probably the number one question. And how do we change the trajectory of, uh, and how do we accomplish this? You know, a lot of it was about, you know, maybe five, six years ago about leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence. And of course, that's still a part of that. You know, now it's also leveraging cloud environments, environments that are already built for us with SaaS and PaaS. So we, we pivot some to ensure that we're just not training our individuals, but we're ensuring that the trained individuals are utilizing their knowledge to actually impact security and not build security. So we got to make sure everything works together when it comes out of the box, for example. There's got to be interoperability. There's got to be communication from device to cloud. You know, if I have events that are taking place in my environment that are in the cloud, I still want to be able to see them at my endpoint if they get there. And I wanna know what they touched, where they touched it. I wanna collapse that information all the way down to know that if I'm vulnerable to a cyber adversary or another nation state, and to do that very quickly so I can be in a response mode instead of trying to sift through all the data to figure out if I've actually been compromised. Well, those are some great points. Well, uh, Ken Carson, thank you so much for joining us here at Cyber Talks and sharing your insights with us. I really appreciate you having me, thank you. Thank you.